Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you, thank you for tuning in to the Dean Show. And now, do you know anybody from Zimbabwe, can you think right now? Do you know anyone that you know from Zimbabwe? Well, I know somebody, and that's my next guest, coming in all the way from Zimbabwe. That's right, if you guessed it right, you'd have, guessing, you'd have been guessing Mufti Menk here on the Dean Show. So don't go anywhere, we have an exciting show for you today. Be right back. This is the Dean this is the Dean Show. 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 And we're back here on the Dean Show with our special guest. Mufti Mank here on the Dean Show. Sheikh, how are you? Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Now, you're, you're, we got you all the way from Zimbabwe, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Mashallah. How, how are things down there? Alhamdulillah, the weather is so beautiful. Mashallah, I wish you could come here, inshallah, and taste a little bit of this weather, inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Maybe, who knows, in the future. Give our salams to everybody down there. We're excited to have you on the, on the Dean Show. We're going to get right into it. And we wanted to uh, first start off and get things, get things rolling with a, a, a billboard that we've seen out there here in the States. I don't know if you've ever have seen it on the internet, internet. It says, the billboard says, uh, God probably doesn't exist. So stop worrying and enjoy life. So when people see this, you know, some people obviously, you know, uh, they look at this as foolishness, but some people there, you know, in this growing trend of pulling away from, from the Creator, you know, people get confused. So to get them unconfused, what would you say to someone who saw this or to people who have this kind of thinking? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My brother, the first thing that comes to my mind is we will not be able to use revelation in order to convince people who uh, are trying to understand what the billboard is saying and looking into it because revelation is for those who believe already. And although it will affect the disbelievers in a positive way, but to start off with, they need to be convinced from uh, perhaps their minds. Normally what I say is, do you know, uh, the mere fact that we only have approximately 70 years in this world already goes to prove that it is not everlasting. If it was really just to enjoy, it would have been much longer than that because 70 years is nothing. And we keep on, uh, you know, passing the baton on to the next generation and passing, uh, subhanAllah, in a way that we age, we become old uh, of late. In the last few weeks, I've been saying in my talks that amazingly, uh, we grow in the presence of our parents and we become much more handsome and we become uh, good looking and so on. And then you get married and guess what starts happening? Uh, you actually have uh, your spouse watching you become old and become frail if you are given life. So if it was all about enjoying, then surely we would have been uh, in a position where we could be boasting off to our spouses saying, you know what, as the days pass, I'm going to become stronger and bigger and better and so on and more beautiful and whatever. But uh, there is definitely a plan. And another thing is, even from a logical point of view, if we take a look at the, uh, what you've just said uh, uh, on the billboard, uh, if a person happens to believe that there is a maker who has made us, uh, if a person happens to believe that, or if a person believes that there is nothing, you know, we're going nowhere, we just enjoy, God perhaps doesn't exist and so on. And on the other hand, you have another person who believes that God does exist. Uh, if we take a look at that from a purely a psychological, or should I say from a, a, a brain perspective, just out of nature, uh, say I am disciplined and I'm a person who really believes that God does exist and I do good deeds and so on, and then I die. Uh, I believe that I'm going to a good place. Now, the person who did not do good deeds at all, for example, uh, and they just did as they wished, they believe that they're going to return to the soil and perhaps to nature and perhaps to whatever else they believe. Uh, but what I do know for a fact is that if I do what I do uh, by being good and by obeying the commands and instructions of the Almighty and so on, uh, then I'm losing nothing at all because uh, from a purely 
uh, you know, probabilities point of view, uh, I will either be where he thinks I'm going to be and, and we would be in the same place or I would be in a better place. But if he was actually correct, uh, then uh, if he was actually correct, then I would be either with him or uh, I would be in a better place. Uh, sadly, what would happen is if I am correct, then he is doomed. And, and this is what we say, that uh, it's best for us to play it safe. Life is only once. Definitely, it's only once in the sense that in this dunya, it's once. We do believe in the life after death, which is a, a different everlasting life. But uh, subhanallah, if you, if you understand that to risk this one life that you do have in such a way that uh, you, you, when you die, you may have messed things up completely, is definitely not worth it. So I would rather uh, convince a person who's looking at this type of a billboard and tell them, look, uh, you'd rather be disciplined because if you are, uh, then inshallah you will be going to a better place than to be a person who just does as they please and is risking everything they have is risking the entire life after death which is far far longer uh, than this particular life and that's definitely proven because those who've died uh, have been dead for longer than we who are alive and when they were alive too they were there for a very short time compared to the amount of time that they have been dead for so Allah knows best Shaykh tell us before we go to break people can see the intellectual people they see the contradictions in these man-made religions so they put them all in the same bucket how can people be sure without a doubt that Islam is not a religion made by a man or a group of men, but it's indeed from the Creator. Uh, one simple way of looking at things is Islam is unique because it calls to the worshipping of the one who made you alone. No one else. So it is not calling to the worship of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may peace be upon him, or Jesus, may peace be upon him, or Moses, may peace be upon him, or anyone else. But it is actually calling towards the worship of the one who made you alone. No risk involved. And this is why we say, when I put my head on the ground in the five daily prayers, I'm actually putting it on the ground solely and only for the one who made me, the one who is uh, in charge or in absolute control of my existence, and the one whom I'm going to return to. So I am saying, oh you whom I'm going to return to, you are the greatest. Now, when I die, definitely I will get to whoever it was, and I'm wording it this way, uh, you know, for those who might not be believing. I'm going to get back to whoever it was, uh, who I constantly said, oh, you whom I'm going to return to, and then he will tell me, well, you worshipped me and me alone, and I will say, well, it's only you whom I worshipped. So this is the uniqueness of the deen of Islam, worshipping uh, Allah or the one, the maker, the one who made you alone. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gr uh, grant us all guidance. Uh, if you take a careful look at this, you will be convinced that what the Muslims are actually uh, uh, preaching or teaching or what they believe is something that would uh, result in no risk at all when it comes to uh, post-death because you have worshipped the one you are going to return to anyway and you have worshipped him and him alone. And this is where إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نستعين comes in, the verse of the opening chapter of the Qur'an, you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. So I'd like to think that this would be quite convincing by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we go to break, in the last minute that we have, is it true that Islam now is the same religion, the same way of life that was practiced by Jesus, peace be upon him, Moses, Abraham, the first man, Adam? Is this the same way of life that they all practice, that we're practicing today? Uh, if you look at it, it's divided into two. One is the aspects of belief and the other is the rules and regulations of uh, that which is permissible and prohibited in the way of living. So when it comes to permissible and prohibited, but that can change and it does, it has changed uh, somewhat, uh, you know, through the years and through the, so when I say the years, I mean through the various prophets as such. Uh, now we have the finality of that with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when it comes to belief and the pillars of belief, they were exactly the same identical ditto. Uh, they, every messenger called towards the worship of the maker alone and uh, you know the respect of the messenger the belief in the, the message itself the last day the life after death good and bad fate comes from the almighty and so on these are the pillars of what we know as belief so that is identical but when it comes to what we call uh, rules and regulations and the, the, the laws of living and so on uh, that would change with the changing of the messenger uh, because of the changing of times but we've got now to what we would term the sharia of Muhammad of Allah 
Ta'ala revealed through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these laws uh, are obviously, uh, you know, laws that may not be exactly identical to what Jesus, may peace be upon him, came with, but uh, the, the bulk of it is quite similar, alhamdulillah. Oh, so the, the worship of calling one to worship the Creator, not the creation, the one God, that's all the same. That's all the same. Yes, exactly. With that note, we're going to take a break, Shay, and we'll be right back with more with Mufti Mank here on The Dean Show. So, قُلْهُ وَاللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Say he, Allah is one. God is one. The maker of mankind. Exactly. Allah who summed that. Allah is self-sufficient. He doesn't need food or drink. He doesn't need to rest on the seventh day. Okay, I really had a problem with that even before I knew anything about Islam. God resting sounds like a weak God. Yeah. Um, لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ He begets not, he doesn't have any children, nor is he a child or born of anything or anyone. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوَانْ أَحَدٌ And there is nothing co-equal or comparable unto him at all. Nobody. Nothing. Jesus, not anything we can imagine. Nobody. Nobody's comparable to the Creator. Nothing. Yeah. And that right there was in its essence what I believed naturally. And back here on the Dean Show with our special guest, all the way from Zimbabwe, Sheikh Mufti Menk. So back to the topic at hand, and the Dean Show really is trying to reach out and clear up the negative stereotypes and the false misconceptions, but when people really look at Islam, we see why it's the fastest growing way of life in the world today, yesterday, and tomorrow, because it makes sense, and you just explain the concept of the Creator, that we have a di direct dial-up with the Creator. But now, we are also trying to reach out to those who are our brothers in humanity who have leaned towards worshipping one of the greatest messengers that God ever sent, who ate, slept, prayed to God. Some people worship Jesus as God. They call Him God or Son of God. Now, you said an interesting story once, and maybe if you can uh, reiterate it here on the Dean Show, of a young kid who was kind of trapped between some crocodiles, if you recall, and then he was calling out to his maker. Can you go ahead and uh, uh, let, let, us, let our viewers in on the story and then the importance of, of uh, putting Jesus in his right place and not elevating him to God? Well, obviously, before we actually say that story, I must say it is with all due respect, because we do have this mutual respect that we do call for as Muslimin, you know, uh, it's important for us to know that we do respect one another as human beings, and it's not that we're trying to make a mockery of it, but something true that we can learn a lesson from. And, you know, th th there was a child that was marooned in uh, the flood times uh, on a tree, and as the water was actually uh, beneath him, he could not uh, leave the tree at all, and there was a crocodile coming up trying to snap towards him, and he uh, be being taught in the church all along, you know, about the Holy Trinity, so to speak, uh, his own understanding of it, he, instead of uh, calling out in, in, in a way that perhaps uh, would have called to the Creator Himself, he said in his own little way that, you know, uh, you know, oh God, I need your help, I need your help right now, and you know what, don't send your son because this is not child's play. Uh, now, 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 if you take a careful look at that, it, it definitely shows that the child did not understand uh, uh, on one side, or, or should I say from one angle, the child did not understand perhaps what the Christianity has been teaching, but from the nature of the child, you know, the natural inclination towards the one maker, the child is saying, oh, you who made me, you alone, come and help me, don't send anyone else, I need you who created me, you who is in absolute control of this particular situation of mine. And that's exactly what Islam teaches, that, you know, you call out to the one who made you, the Quran says, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَى you know, uh, is there anyone besides he who actually made you that would respond to the distressed in the time of distress? Uh, it is definitely Allah alone. You know, ilahum uh, ma'Allah. Is there any deity with Allah or any deity in partnership with Allah, meaning with your maker? No, he is alone. And this is what Islam is all about. So uh, truly, if a person surrenders to the one who made him or her, uh, what would make them recognize that this message is actually from the maker himself is that the message would not have in it the calling towards the worship of the one who brought the message, but rather the owner of the message. 
So uh, the, the same applies to, say, for example, what we term imams or the sheikhs, or even if you're a scholar, you know, I happen to be uh, a person who issues religious decrees within my own society and community. And, and still, we never ever allow people to worship us in any way. If someone's committed a sin, for example, Islam teaches you that that is between you and your maker. Uh, there are two types of uh, sins. One is that which you've usurp the rights of a fellow human being. If that's the case, you need to apologize to them, obviously. But we're talking of, you know, sins that are committed between you and your maker. You do not get delivered by a priest or a person who is an imam and so on. Uh, what definitely would happen is you would cry out to your own maker in the darkest corner of the night to say, oh, my maker, I have transgressed against you. Uh, I regret what I've done. I admit what I've done. Uh, I am sorry. I, will, uh, I ask your forgiveness and I will not do it again. We believe that as soon as you say that, uh, genuinely, the sin is wiped out completely, without a doubt. Now, uh, some might teach that, okay, you need to go through a church, you need to go through a priest, you need to go through a man. Uh, we believe that, no, you go through your maker, and the maker is known as Ghafoorul Rahim, which means most forgiving, most merciful, also known as Rahmanun Rahim, which means most merciful uh, in a specific way and most merciful in a general way. Uh, amazingly, if you take a look at that, uh, it shows that Islam is actually actually based on true mercy and true forgiveness, the forgiveness of the one who made you. And you need to feel the link yourself, you and your maker. Uh, that is the plug-in that Islam is so unique uh, about. And alhamdulillah, I really believe that so many people have turned to Islam. One of the prime reasons, because I usually ask people, you know, what was it that was so beautiful about Islam that made you turn to it? And they always say, I can actually talk to my maker. I don't need to confess my sins to anyone. Uh, I don't need to confess sins to uh, someone who might be perhaps more sinful than I am, and yet I don't even know. Uh, and I only find out years later that this person has been perhaps uh, engaging in some, uh, you know, activity that we were not uh, really, uh, we wouldn't have believed, and we were busy asking them to forgive us and deliver us and so on. Uh, but it, with Islam, it was always a direct plug-in. Uh, it was myself and my maker, and this is what was the beauty of the deen. So we ask uh, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really to guide us all uh, and to show us. I, I usually tell the people that if you are looking for the truth, always pray for the uh, purest teachings of Jesus Christ. May peace be upon him. You know, ask to be guided to the purest teachings of Jesus. And by the will of Allah, you will be guided just to the purest teachings of Jesus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help us all and guide us all. Ameen. 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 Uh, tell us, uh, Sheikh, can you define, before we get into the next question, the difference between when someone's judging you and someone's trying to give the tender, loving advice to you. Because sometimes people are very sensitive, so when you try to give them some good advice, they'll say, stop judging me. So can you define the difference? Uh, I think this is something that I've come across uh, being a counselor who tries to help the, the youth and so on, that uh, every time we try and advise people, they, they're quick to say, stop judging me. But uh, the difference, I would think, is when someone says, you are a bad person, that is a judgment, that is a statement that is passed. But if someone says, my sister, I think this is not a good idea, you know, I, uh, according to the dean, this is wrong. They're not saying you are wrong, but the action is wrong. And a lot of the times, I'm quite careful to try and, uh, I know we are human beings, we all do make mistakes. I mean, we must not. Uh, you know, we need to get that quite clear. We're all human beings. We all need help, myself included. But uh, I try my best, and I'm sure a lot of us do, uh, to separate the action uh, from the person who is engaging in the action. Because, you know, the Almighty loves us all, but the deed is, the, is, is what is uh, of essence. The deed is what is either good or bad. So uh, normally, if a person is just explaining to you that the deeds are good or bad, they are not judging you. But if a person tells you that you are a good person or a bad person, they are actually judging you. And usually what would happen is, uh, we would not mind a good judgment. Nobody says you're judging me when you say, brother, you're a good man, you know, stop judging me. But, but normally when you say something a little bit, uh, uh, should I say, on the negative side, then you, we quick to hear the statements, you know, you're judging me. Uh, however, I, I believe that we need advice and all of us need advice because the whole uh, deen and spirituality is based on uh, sincere advice for one another. And what I do believe is that uh, if someone is advising you and they're telling you what is right and wrong, what we are taught to do is to accept that as advice. 
uh, and to try and understand it and to work uh, to, inshallah, to, uh, put it into practice by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But let's not say you're being judgmental when really a judgment has not been passed. So if somebody is trying to advise their Muslim brother or sister to, let, when they see them, let's say, taking 10, 15 minutes a day or, or more to put up makeup on, but then when they're calling them to Salat or the brother is blow drying his hair and putting the hairspray in his hair and it takes, you know, maybe as much as the woman, but he doesn't have time to make the Salat. And now that person has got his brother or sister to tune in and they're hearing us trying to advise them to Salat. Is this out of the love that we have for them? Definitely, this is out of the love and this is no judgment whatsoever. In fact, this is a holding the hand and trying to guide in a way that we all would be appreciative of. Uh, I would really appreciate and I still do appreciate those who correct me in a beautiful way to remind me of my maker and my duty unto my maker. Uh, because definitely, uh, if a person is reminding us of our duties unto our maker, uh, that is no, uh, you know, they're not just passing a judgment against us and so on. Uh, they're merely telling us that, you know, you need to be uh, conscious of uh, your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to give you a quick example, uh, sometimes when I've told some people, you know, uh, let's go to the masjid for salah, uh, they would quickly say, well, what do you think we don't go? And I've got to clear it to say, it's not like I think you don't go, but I think let's go now. Meaning, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm just telling it to you now. So, so uh, sometimes when you tell people, you know, uh, make sure that you eat halal, they say, what do you think I'm eating haram? Uh, that is, 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 a, is a low statement. It's not like we, we think you're eating haram. We're just saying that, you know what, uh, it's, it, we would like you to just ensure that what you do is right. You must be doing it right, but we just want to confirm. And we want to encourage you. So it's more of an encouragement, which is actually superb. You know, it reminds me of a person who's an athlete who's constantly told by the coach to do better and better. It doesn't mean they're not doing the best, but they're just being reminded to do better, inshallah. Beautiful, beautiful. MashaAllah. We're going to take a break, Shaykh, and we'll be right back with more and some, some more questions on this topic with Shaykh Mufti Mek here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. When I embraced Islam, from that day on, I knew I never wanted to drink another drink in my life. I never wanted to smoke. I never wanted to harm my body. Because I realized that it was a blessing, you know, to be able to see life from the perspective of Islam because it's like a lens that clarifies life for you. And so I started seeing the clarity of life and I said, this is what I've been looking for all my life. Now all I have to do is live up to it. Back here on The D Show with our special guest all the way from Zimbabwe. And Mufti Mank, thank you again for being with us here on The D Show. We're honored to have you with us. Alhamdulillah, we talked about in the beginning the purity of Islam, the call to worship the maker of mankind, the creator and have a direct connection and Islam is based on proven evidence or whoever wants to look into it they will see it's a way of life that fits with the human nature and we talked about the young boy who did what, what, what was in his very nature, he called on God alone not the creation and now we differentiated between the judging someone and giving the lovely advice. So we're going to get into a question here, I'm going to paraphrase it and now that the, the viewing audience knows that the difference between the judging and the loving advice, hopefully we can give some loving advice to the person in question in the question. How's that, Sheikh? Inshallah. Okay, so the, the person now is asking about their sister-in-law. So a sister is asking about a sister-in-law, uh, sister how she's been advising her for years now, over seven, eight years, about the modest dress and putting on the hijab, and she's kind of run into a dead end and every time they get together she doesn't try to bring it up but on occasion she does and she hears such excuses as she would be the first in her community to do it she kind of you know uh, shuns it off but she has so much love for her that now she thought okay through the program we can get her to watch it and she can have someone who's on such as yourself to advise her at the same time she wanted to address the, the ghira, the protective jealousy, the loving protective jealousy that the husband should have also in regards to his wife. So it's a twofold question. MashaAllah, what a beautiful scenario. You know, to be honest, we need to be uh, very, very 
patient when it comes to calling people towards the goodness. We never lose hope, even if it means we go on for years on end, but we need to constantly you know, tap, inshallah, in the right places and say the right things, ask Allah's help and guidance. Pray for the people that you're going to be calling uh, towards Allah because it is Allah who will actually turn them, not you. You know, I can say whatever I want, but my words would not be effective uh, if Allah does not want them to be effective. Effective. So I need to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask him to make the words that I'm saying be digested in a beautiful way uh, so that the person can turn towards Allah. So that's point number one. We pray for the sister. May Allah make it easy for her. Uh, secondly, uh, sister, you need to know that uh, at some stage, you know, you have to be strong, even if you're going to be the first person in your whole community. In fact, if I would look at that as a bonus, because anyone who emulates your example after that, even after you passed away, you would be getting the full reward because you started the, that uh, good sunnah in your own uh, community. So uh, although you might get a little bit of, you know, flack in the sense of uh, dirty eyes or sometimes dirty words, uh, that's all part of uh, the test that Allah promises, He says, you know, when you do that which is correct and you, you are doing it because of your uh, iman and your belief in, in me, meaning in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I will test you just to confirm that you're being genuine. So if you did it for Allah, you will remain. But if you did it for people, then you will abstain as soon as they have a comment. Uh, and, and you won't have an answer, you won't know how to face. But uh, we need to be worried about the day we face with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my sister, uh, be strong. And remember that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept our days in this world quite limited. And at the same time, uh, we'd like to enjoy this world. And we want to enjoy it in a way that we will be uh, heading straight through, even in the life after death, to the same enjoyment. In fact, much, much better uh, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so I hope and I pray that you can become a little bit stronger uh, and inshallah a means of guidance even for others. I know of some sisters who are very, very influential. The day they turned to hijab, they, were, uh, uh, they lost a little bit of their popularity. But at the same time, there are hundreds of thousands of others who followed the examples, depending on how popular they were. Uh, I'm sure these people would earn paradise just through uh, the, that particular multiplication of the reward by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he promises that to us. So uh, if I had the opportunity to actually be the first in my community to, to do something that, that would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is actually a duty that I've been weak so far to fulfill, uh, I would really jump to it to say, may, may Allah write my name down as being the first person who started this uh, in my society and community because it's something great. Uh, that having been said, we get to the husbands and what is known as the ghira. Some people call it possessiveness. You know, uh, it's the healthy possessiveness when you're very possessive over what is yours. So uh, if, uh, for example, a woman displays uh, uh, all the beauty that she has and every other woman displays all the beauty that they have, you will always find by default someone who is uh, prettier. Perhaps they have better, and I'm going to say it as it is, perhaps they have better legs, perhaps, perhaps they have better hair, perhaps they have a better complexion, better skin. There will always be someone who has something better. And if you are the person who has the best in your community, there will come a time when you develop wrinkles and when whatever you have had, there will be someone younger than you who then the, all the eyes turn towards. So all Islam does is Islam says, hang on, we want you to appreciate and we want you to respect and we want you to elevate the status of those whom uh, you have loved at one stage in your lives, it needs to be built. It must not just be based on something external. It is based on their goodness of the heart, like we are taught uh, at Deen wal Khuluq, which means uh, the, the consciousness of the Almighty and the character and conduct. If someone has brilliant character, they're dedicated, they're ready to sacrifice uh, the love of such a person, even the day they might put an extra pound or two on, uh, it will be even more by the will of Allah. I always tell uh, uh, um, well, let me not say exactly who I say to his, my, my wife. I always say to her that, you know what, subhanAllah, if you put on an extra pound, I've got more to love. Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. And that's just a way to say, uh, you know, that look, it's not, it, obviously women are all concerned about, the, about their weight and so on. And I'm sure the men are too. But uh, sometimes, you know, you helplessly, your metabolism rate decreases. And as you grow older, you might put on a pound or two. It is up to the man or up to the spouse to ensure that, 
He makes it clear that, look, as much as we would like ourselves to be healthy, but we are taught that if I would not, you would not lose my love just because of a pound or two you've put. Uh, perhaps, like I said, you would have more to love uh, in terms of weight and in terms of size. <laughs> By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that having been said, uh, it is important for us to encourage our spouses. I know of a lot of brothers, sadly, who tell their wives, you know what, I don't want you to dress in this way. And that is like reverse uh, oppression. You know, a lot of the people in the Western world think that the Muslims are oppressed to wear the hijab. I have come across thousands of cases of w women who want to wear the hijab, but their families or their, their, their men are telling them not to and forcing them not to. So that is the reverse hijab, which a lot of people don't ever speak about, sorry, the reverse oppression. A lot of people uh, do not speak about. And, and this is something we need to highlight. So, my brother, it is your duty to encourage your spouse uh, and, and those who are uh, perhaps under your authority or under, let's say, your guardianship. It's to encourage them in the right direction, in a beautiful, gentle way, to say that, you know what, this is the responsibility you have to Allah. And I like to always speak about the pros and cons uh, when it comes to uh, that which is easily understood by the mind. Like I said, sometimes revelation for those whose iman is weak uh, might not have that impact yet, uh, although it does have some form of an impact even for the disbelievers but at the same time if you have a logical answer uh, they would definitely understand it and they would definitely come to appreciate the goodness of the hijab and the goodness of the dress code uh, and there is so much that comes with it like I always say it's a whole package so if, if you have part of the package inshallah you'll enjoy the rest of the perks of it but if you decide you don't want uh, you know a part of it then you might uh, there might be a little pay payment that you will have to actually top up with uh, let's hope Hope that that's not going to be a little bit expensive for you. Uh, obviously, I've worded it just in an example form, but I hope and I pray can understand that the duties that we have unto Allah. So, if we transgress the commands of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, if we go against what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has uh, asked us, then definitely we would be the ones at loss. Uh, it's not Him who would actually be at a loss. So we need to consider this and we need to really uh, make an effort to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith makes it quite clear. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever displeases Allah because they want to please people, uh, they, they would earn the uh, displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and soon the displeasure of the people as well. And whoever would like to, whoever pleases uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the process uh, finds people are displeased with that, uh, they definitely would earn the pleasure of Allah and soon the people would realize and understand and uh, they would also be pleased at some stage. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to strengthen us and to help us all and to help us to help one another as well. I mean. Shaykh, thank you so much for finding the time to be with us. Inshallah, God willing, we can have you back again sometime in the future. How's that sound? Inshallah, why not? Definitely. Alhamdulillah. This was my first uh, session, obviously, here, and it's been a good experience, and I hope and I pray that perhaps we can uh, have a bit more of this, inshallah. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Jazakallah Haider. We started with peace. We end with peace. Peace be with you. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. And peace be with you and with all our listeners as well. Jazakallah khair. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And that was our special guest, all the way from Zimbabwe, Mufti Mank. Sheikh, thank you very much for being with us here on the Dean Show. Please send our salams to all the whole community out there from myself and from the Dean Show team to all of you. Peace be with you. Salam alaikum. And to all the viewing audience, I hope that you got to benefit. Now it's just common sense. Design indicates a designer. And this whole universe didn't come by chance. So the foolish thing that you see out there on the billboard that we talked about is just foolishness. You see, it says like probably, so just to create some doubt, but there is no doubt. It's beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is a creator for this creation. The birds and the bees and the seven seas and everything that you see around us. But people want to go away from the responsibility that we have as human beings, which is to obey our creator who created us. You have a boss at work, that's right, that boss needs to be obeyed. But now, if you fess up and you're like, yeah, okay, I give in, yeah, there is a creator, it's just common sense, right? You quit blocking it, then you're gonna have to do the next thing. You have to be sincerely submitting to him. And that's Islam. Then we talked about the purity of Islam, of just dialing up direct. There's no middleman in Islam. Just like that young boy in the Sheikh's story, nobody else did he call upon. It was in his nature, like a little, three, four, five-year-old kid. 
It's in our nature that we just call upon our Maker, the one who created us. And that is what the foundation of the message that all the messengers brought and taught. They called us to call on the one who created Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and all these messengers that were sent throughout time, bringing the purpose of life to us, calling us to have a relationship with our Creator, because otherwise the opposite happens. If you don't have a relationship with your Creator, then what happens most of the time? You end up turning to loving the things of the world, and you become spiritually void. So you start to really love money to a level that you just can't live without it. And then if you have a billion and you lose half of that, you just go suicidal. Or, for instance, you're just into cars and, and women, women into just pleasing the men. And then it's just a, a connection with the temporal, the temporary, the transitory things of this world. But when your heart's attached to its maker, then that's when you really get that satisfaction, that peace, that contentment that money can't buy. So we talked about that. So it's really important that you call upon your creators. That young boy did in the Sheikh story. He called on God alone. Ask God to guide you. Stop blocking the truth. And the advice that we had for our sister. Oh man, just do it, sis. Just do it. Just do it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. That's all I can say. Because at the end, now, when you're six feet under, and then just contemplate. When you're all alone, nobody's around you. Think. When you die, hmm, you get scared when you're going down an alley and it's all pitch black. You're in a room by yourself. It just lights are off and nobody's around. And you hear like, you know, some squeaking and you freak out. Imagine you're in the grave now. You want the pleasure of your creator. And now you've lived your whole life disobeying him. And people sent you the sign. This is another sign right here. So think about it. Is it worth it? And all those people that you were worried about, you were displeasing him because of the popularity, you know, you wanted to fit in. So now it was like, forget about what my creators tell me to do. I'm just going to follow John, Dick, Sally, and Susie. No, don't do it. Just do it. And everything that the creators told us to do is, is beneficial for us. It's good. It's good. And you benefit from it. It's for your protection. It's to help you become the best. So let's do it right now before we're in the grave, before death comes. Because at the end, it's too late. Then you're going to wish you can go back. But you're not going to have a second chance. So now is the chance. You're watching this. Just do it. Just do it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Do the good things that a lot of the creators told us to do. Tune in every week. Follow us on the Twitter. Keep up with our shows. Facebook. Like us there. Help us get this message out to the world so more people can learn about the purpose of life. They can live it. And they can be happy. They can truly be happy. We'll see you next time. Inshallah. God willing. Until then, peace be with you.